Hare Krishna Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. <clears throat> all glories to Srila Prabhupada, all glories at your lotus feet, uh, Maharaj. Welcome once again to the Bhakti Sangha Japa conference call. Um, I would like to announce that Maharaj will continue to enlighten us on Srimad Bhagavatam from Canto 5, Chapter 9, on verse 1 and 2. Maharaj, whenever you're ready, you may take the call. Hare Krishna. Omegan to Midandasya Ganajana Samakaya Chakta Gun Militam Yaina Tasma Shri Gurvena Maha Sri Chaitanya Manodis Tam Stapitam Yana Buddha Lai Swain Lupa Kidam Mayam Buddha Kisma Kidam Bikam Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prasna Buddha Lai Shumakti Bhakti Vedanta Swami Tinamine Namaste, Saraswati Deve, Gaudavani Pachari, Nangivishri, Sasunyavari, Postyakya, Devi Satari, Nay. Panchakalpa, Tarubhischa, Kripa Sindhu, Pehvacha, Patitanam, Pavane Vyo, Vaishnave Vyo, Namaho Namaha. Jai Sri Krishna Chaitanya, Prabhu Nityananda, Sri Advaita Gadadhar, Shiva Siddhigaur, Bhakti Vindam. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. So we need the verse. <laughs> and uh, Srimad Bhagavatam. Canto 9, chapter, cha Canto 5, chapter 9, verses 1 and 2. Go down the page to the translation. Translation, Srila Sukadeva Goswami continued. My dear king, after giving up the body of a deer, Bhart Maharaj took birth in a very pure Brahmana family. There was a Brahmana who belonged to the dynasty of Angira. He was fully qualified with Brahminical qualifications. He could control his mind and senses, and he studied the Vedic literatures and other subsidiary literatures. He was expert in giving charity, and he was always satisfied. Tolerant, very gentle, learned, and non-envious. He was self-realized, engaged in the devotional service of the Lord. He remained always in trance. He had nine equally qualified sons by his first wife. And by his second wife, he begot twins, a brother and a sister, of which the male child was said to be the topmost devotee and foremost of saintly kings, Martin Maharaj. This then is the story of the birth he took after giving up the body of a deer. <clears throat> Purport. Bart Maharaj was a great devotee, but he did not attain success in one life. In Bhagavad Gita it said that a devotee who does not fulfill his devotional duties in one life is given the chance to be born in a fully qualified Brahmin family or a rich Kshatri or Vaishya family. Suchinam Srimatam Gehe. Bharat Maharaj was first born son of Maharaj Rishab in a rich Kshatriya family, but due to his willful neglect, negligence of the spiritual duties and his excessive attachment to an insignificant deer, he was obliged to take birth as the son of a deer. However, due to his strong position as a devotee, he was gifted with the remembrance of his past life. Being repented, he remained in a solitary forest and always thought of Krishna. And then he was given the chance to take birth in a very good Brahmin family. Om again, Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. So it's understood that devotional service is never lost. <laughs> Once begin, begun, it will reach fruition in due course of time. Of course, it may take many lives, 
or it could be done in one life if one is very qualified and one is very fortunate. So therefore this point is being made that in material life, whatever you do, you lose. Nothing is permanent. Whatever we gain or whatever we success we have, time takes it away mm -hmm. and takes the people we know also. Everything is lost. And then one begins another chapter in material existence. So therefore, one who understands this point will understand that taking devotional service is an invested interest. In other words, any gain we make, uh, I think there's a beautiful verse in the uh, Srimad Bhagavatam, first canto, fifth chapter, verse number 17. If you could turn to that verse, one, five, 17. Yeah, Prabhupada quotes this a lot. Toktva sudharma charanam bujam harer, vajan napokapta tatato yadi. Yatrakta kav avrubhadra mabhura musa kim kovarta apto vajitam sudharma taha. Translation. One who has forsaken his material occupations to engage in devotional service of the Lord may sometimes fall down while in an immature stage. Yet there is no danger of being unsuccessful. On the other hand, a devotee, a non-devotee fully engaged in occupational duties does not gain anything. So there is no, there's always benefit in devotional service. Even if one doesn't finish, we see here how Bart Maharaj went quite far down in the sense that he, and it's here, it's mentioned, here, yeah, Bart Maharaj was obliged to take birth as a stag due to his intimate attachment to the stag. He thought of this stag when he died and such in his next birth, he became a stag, although he did not forget the incident of his previous birth. Chuchuketu also fell down because Stop moving the thing I can't follow. Chitra Ketu fell down due to his offenses at the feet of Shiva. But in spite of all this, the stress is giving here to surrendering unto the lotus feet of the Lord, even if there's a chance of falling down, because even though one falls down from one's prescribed duty of devotional service, he will never forget the lotus feet of the Lord. Once engaged in devotional service of the Lord, one will continue the service in all circumstance. And then the example is, the outstanding example is Ajamil, who had fallen way down. But because of his previous connection with devotional life, he remembered Narayan when he was being attacked by the Yamadudas. Oh, he remembered his son, he called out his son, but he remembered the Lord when in calling. So here it says that in the long run, anything temporary has no benefit. And anything eternal, even if it's temporarily gauged in the eternal, it continues. Srila Prabhupada would say, if you have become 50% Krishna conscious, and then you end your life at that stage, then... In your next life, you begin at 50%. And by the mercy of the Lord, you'll again connect with the process of devotional service. The Lord will arrange that through circumstances. So we see how beneficial devotional service is. That um, one will always be in the best position to connect with Krishna and continue. So, um, of course, the, the goal 
is to become fully Krishna conscious. Ananya bhakti, or that bhakti that is pure, survive from some paro dharma, yato bhakti, a hoksaje, a hoituki, a priyata, a yatma supersede the tea. This verse delineates pure devotional service. Unmotivated by material desires, uninterrupted by material circumstances. Well, that is pure devotional service. So it's quite rare, but it can be done to make it in one life. Generally, Srila Prabhupada says we can finish up one life and then in our next life we go to where Krishna is in the material world as Krishna performs his leelas somewhere in the material world continuously and then one will join with Krishna in his association in the material world and after that life they will go back home back to Godhead that's generally the process but if one is very qualified and diligent and, uh, and uh, uses all of one's time, energy, and resources in devotional service, one can make it in this life. And of course, with the benefit of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, it's become even easier. Mm -hmm. It's become even easier because Lord Chaitanya really feels compassion for all living entities and he wants to bring people back to his lotus feet and devotion in the best and most quickest way that's lord Chaitanya. he speeds up the process through the chanting of the Hare krishna maha mantra and service to devotees so one who understands this verse it's important that there's no loss in devotional service. So one should not give up devotional service in any circumstance. We can go back to the original verse. Uh, that means that even if it's difficult, even if there is some reverses, or even if one falls down, still, because it's the nature of the soul to engage in service to the Lord, we are in the best situation. And, and as it says in the purport, that uh, even if you don't make it, you get a good birth and you begin again. Suchinam Srimatam Gehe is that verse from the sixth chapter of Bhagavad Gita to assure one will get a good birth in the next life. So sometimes we might conjecture and the conjecture has some validity and that is some of us have performed devotional service in our previous life and now we are picking up from where we left off in last life hopefully we can finish in this life bart maharaj you see what kind of birth he got he got a very very good birth in a very very devotional family his father was absorbed in devotional service and he created progeny that were qualified on the same level as he was. But, but you'll see as the, as the pastime unfolds, Bart Maharaj, now he's on, he has a new name. He's also named as Bart. He's given the same name Bart but because he acted contrary to the, the uh, rules and regulations of devotional service, not to devotional service, he was seen as Jada Bharai. Mm -hmm. Jada means dull. It appears that he didn't know what he was doing. He seems like he was an ignorant dullard. But actually, he was on the highest platform of bhakti because he simply arranged his activities so he wouldn't be again caught up with any kind of material attachments. Because even in the best situation one finds themselves in, uh, one can 
be diverted away from Krishna consciousness. Just like, you know, nobody was going to glorify Bart Maharaj in this particular birth. Why? Because he didn't show any of the symptoms of a great devotee. So we know that glorification of a personality has, can, and not always, but can have the tendency of a person to, to accept these things as one's character and become proud. And if one becomes proud, it becomes difficult to get the mercy of the Lord. And pride can also lead to a fall down. So he, he, was, he was avoiding getting any kind of glorification or any kind of uh, benefits of, for being a devotee. Although he was, he was a Mahabhakta, Bhagavad, practically, he was fixed in loving devotional service to the Lord. But he never showed it externally. He kept it within his mind and within his heart. In some activities, you'll see how he played that out by acting in a pure devotional sway, especially when you get to the part where he instructs King Rahugana. That becomes clear of the quality of his devotional life. So here uh, we find the benefit of devotional service. And it's illustrated in many places throughout the Shastra. Never think that devotional service is like ordinary material activities. It may appear from the external point of view to be the same thing that the non-devotees perform. The only difference which is a significant difference, is the consciousness. Consciousness makes the difference. Consciousness is the principle that is the difference between a materialist and a spiritualist. And the consciousness that one applies in activities when it's directed towards Krishna, it's called devotional service. So a devotee may do similar things, that the non-devotees also do in the world, but they do it for Krishna. They do it as a service to Krishna with a desire to please Krishna and with a desire to elevate and purify their own heart. So um, this verse is important, extremely important to see how merciful the Lord is. Bart Maharaj was such a great soul and even though he fell, he fell, it says here, fell down due to negligence of his spiritual duties and his excessive attachment to a deer. And because of that attachment, excessive, not just attachment, excessive attachment, he became a deer. Mm -hmm. This is very significant to note because we have to be careful how do we get attached in this world. If we become overly attached to friends, family members, pets, or any, anything in this world, if that attachment becomes excessive, then we may be forced to take a birth in that same species of life. Sometimes it says that, you know, man becomes so attached to women that in his next birth, he becomes a woman. A woman becomes very attached to men, and an expert, she becomes a man. In either case, it's an it's the material attachment and causes us another birth in the material world. So, and therefore, one has to develop their attachment to Krishna. Getting attached to Krishna is not hard because Krishna is all attractive. When you try to get attached to something in this world, you have to somehow or other push aside all the negativity and the iniquities and the things that cause us not to be attached. But in, with Krishna, there's nothing like that. Everything about Krishna is wonderful. His qualities, his activities, 
his beauty, which devotees really seem to get attached to the most, how beautiful Krishna is, in so many ways that he exhibits his beauty, the way he dresses, the way he speaks, the way he deals with others, the way he, uh, and just his personal countenance, his personification of extreme beauty. So getting attached to Krishna is not hard. It just means applying our attention in that direction. Because Krishna is not only attractive, he's interesting. <laughs> you know, when you want to get attached to someone, if the person is interesting in a positive way, it makes the attachment easier <laughs> or more natural. But Krishna is like that. He's interesting. He's amazing in the sense that you don't know exactly what he's going to do, when he's going to do it. But it's always for the benefit of others. Um, he acts only for the pleasure of his devotees or for the upliftment of his devotees. And he presents himself in so many ways. So it's easy to get attached to Krishna if we have to focus. But the thing is, we have attachments for so many other things. And because those attachments divert our attachment away from Krishna, we don't have enough time, we don't spend enough time getting attached to Krishna. The easiest way to get attached to Krishna is to hear about his pastimes, especially his pastimes in Vrindavan. They are very sweet, very powerful, and go directly to the heart. To get attached to his devotees is another way to get attached to Krishna because the devotees represent Krishna. And therefore, getting attached to the devotee of Krishna is getting attached to Krishna. So we can get attached to the devotees of Krishna by serving the devotees of Krishna, hearing from and associating with devotees of Krishna. So the idea is to focus our attention away from the material and onto the Krishna. And that way, at the time of death, Taktua Deham Purna Janmani Naiti Mameti Sur Juna, or what is that verse? Uh, uh, one who remembers me at the time of death doesn't, and does not come back to this material world. It's from the Bhagavad Gita. Uh, one who thinks of Krishna. Not that one. It's... Uh, yeah, yeah, that's the one. 8-5. 8-5. Eight five and eight six. Ante kalai chimami vam smara mukta kalai varam yat pravyanti samad bhagvam yanti nasatra samsayaham. What is the next verse? And whoever at the time of at the end of his life quits his body remembering me attains to my abode. And the next verse, of course, is eight six. This is the one that's really. Yam yam vapis param bhavam tattva ante kalevitam tami vaiti konta ya sadasa bhava bhavitaha. This one is the real powerful one. Whatever state of being one remembers when he quits his body, O state the son of Kunti, that state he will attain without fail. So it's not easy to remember Krishna at the end of life if you are not making your life around Krishna now. Whatever is the most important thing in your life at the time of death, you will think of that. There's no question about that. You can't think of Krishna if you haven't made Krishna the most important thing in your life. You'll think of the most important thing in your life, whether it's your family, your friends, your children, your money, or even your very body. So therefore, one has to sp spend quality time getting attached to Krishna, by hearing about Krishna, and developing a relationship with Krishna. And Krishna is very eager in fact, not only is he eager, he even helps that us to develop that relationship. So he is just, he's even more eager for us, him, us to develop a relationship with him than 
we are with him. That is Krishna. It's like the father and the family. The father loves all the children and the father is always concerned about the welfare of the children. Krishna is like that. He, he says, I am the seed giving father of all living entities. So he treats us like, you know, like children who need care. And he's always encouraging us to understand that what he is and what he stands for is what we're looking for. <laughs> it's what we're looking for. We may not always know it. Sometimes we try to find happiness in the, the ephemeral things in this world. And sometimes we get some relief from material suffering by doing such things. But if we center, and this is the point, the word center, all our activities around Krishna, then everything, all the results of those activities will lead us to more and more attachment to Krishna. And getting attached to Krishna means going back home, back to Godhead. And then at the end of life, it becomes natural and easy to remember Krishna. But if it's, if it's not the main part of our life, then when life, when life ends, it will become difficult and sometimes even impossible. Because the time of death uh, is not an easy time. And it's described in the Bhagavatam in the third canto of Kapila Devi talks about what happens at the time of death. And so uh, to keep your focus on Krishna is not so easy. But if you've been practicing Krishna consciousness your whole life, then Krishna is there to help you. So, uh, yeah, and we see how, I mean, this example is the primary example, how Maharaj Bharat, I mean, you read the verses from the previous chapter, how devotional he was, but his attention got diverted to an insignificant deer. And because of that, he had to take birth in that way. So and this is a very instructive pastime showing how attachment brings us to a stage of consciousness because consciousness is formed around attachments. And the stronger the attachments, the more that consciousness is focused in that direction. But we, we're interested in becoming Krishna conscious <laughs> because Krishna consciousness is perfect consciousness. It fulfills all desires for all time, all places, eternally. <laughs> okay, so uh, the message here is keep focused on Krishna. <laughs> Any questions or comments? <laughs> Thank you, Maharaj. What a wonderful nectarian class, as always. And uh, you made this difficult thing seem so simple. Yeah, it's easy to get attracted to Krishna. It's easy to get attached. Thank you. And thanks for telling us the ways how to do it again and again. We do need the reminder. Um, wonderful class, Maharaj. Thank you. Devotees, if we have any question, we can unmute and ask Maharaj, or you can raise your hand, whatever. You're easy with. Good morning, good morning, Maharaj. This is this is Linda, in uh, Michigan. Um, can you can you just give a um, a short? Um, I don't know. Um, snaps on how we can best disassociate ourselves from the material elements and focus, you know, on, on Krishna more, you know, um, I'm, I find, you know, when I wake up in the morning, it's like, oh, you know, I see this and I see that. And it has not, nothing to do with the Lord. It, it's, it's just an accumulation of stuff. And yeah, I'm, yeah. 
we were in contact with a lot of material things, but we have we we have to see them for what they are. They're just necessary. They may be necessary parts of our living in day to day, but the the living just living is not the goal of life. Loving is the goal of life. Mm -hmm. We don't love these things. We have we use these things, and so they're there. They'll be there. And if we lose them, we can always replace them. Mm. You know, they're not such, you know, but love is the main thing, which, which opens up the heart and brings complete satisfaction and happiness. And that's found in Krishna. So bringing in Krishna more and more, it's like bringing in the sun more and more. You bring in light, you bring in heat as you increase the, uh, you know, the presence of the sun. So in the same way, um, we can minimize to the point of necessity our connection with our material things. In other words, use them, but don't overuse them. Keep them, but don't accumulate them where you just keep accumulating more and more of the same thing. Whatever you have that's necessary in order to live nicely, that's fine. Use it. It's not something you can love. It's something you need to keep in order to fortify your material needs. But Krishna is way beyond that. So bringing in Krishna means hearing about Krishna, reading about Krishna, hearing discussions about Krishna, uh, associated with devotees who are, who are engaged in devotional service. All these things will strengthen our attachment to Krishna. You know, Prabhupada used to say, you know, just like there's a, there's a you know, people who, who are drunkards, they're always, once they finish drinking, they're always looking for the next bottle. <laughs> yeah. In their addiction. So they're absorbed in alcohol. Well, if I'd use that example and to say that, yeah, this is what we have to be like with Krishna. <laughs> Very good. Very good. Thank you. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Do we have any further questions for Maharaj? Hare Krishna. Um, Hare Krishna Maharaj, thank you for a wonderful class. Um, my question, uh, and feel free to tell me if it's not related and, and not appropriate, but my question is that... Um, we need a little, more, a little more volume. Mm -hmm. can, you, can you hear me better? A little better? bit, but a little more. Okay, I'm, I'm going to try and speak near the microphone. Is this better? That's it. That's perfect. Okay. So um, the question, someone asked me this question. They were pointing out that in seventh canto of Bhagavatam, it says Brahma and the residents of Brahma Loka return to Vaikuntha in their, in, their own, in their own bodies, in their same bodies. But I'd read or heard somewhere else that Brahma um, in his spiritual form has the form of a maidservant. And I just want to know, is there a way to clarify um, whether he returns to Vaikunti in his own body or if he has a different rasa? So is there any comment that you can make on that, please, Maharaj? Is, is it the same Brahman? Because there are, there are a number of Brahmas. And, and when you refer to Brahma in the uh, Bhagavatam, sometimes they talk about different Brahmas. Uh -huh. There's, there's okay. a Brahma. There's a Brahma who's a pure devotee and there's a Brahma who's not a pure devotee. <laughs> so there is, you know, just like in the third canto at the end, it says that Brahma, he actually, at the end of his life, goes to the spiritual world. But then again, because he's not qualified, he again comes back to the material world. So there's, uh, I would have to hear a little bit more about the particular... Referring him to a, as a maid servant means that more or less he is in that mood of, you know, Madhurya Ras. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Yeah. 
So, um, but then again, which Brahma are we referring to? If that's the, if that's the Brahma we're referring to, then the question is that yeah, you know, that's the pure devotee Brahma. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's in the Brahma Samhita when he's actually glorifying. That's the original Brahma when Krishna spoke mm -hmm. the uh, the uh, prayers, which later became the Brahma Samhita. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Brian. That, that makes complete sense. I, I did give that answer, but I just wanted to check to see if I was, if I was accurate, because I also said the same thing, that there's different Brahmas in different universes, so they could actually have different destinations. Thank you so much for clarification. Thank you, Bhutta Baba from Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. <laughs> Thank you for such another beautiful class. And I have a question. Um, you kind of, as you were speaking of becoming attached to the devotees, um, I started to think about um, being attached to uh, your guru, uh, you know, a guru Maharaj, and how. Um, you know, because we've heard, at least I've read or heard stories about how when devotees are leaving, Srila Prabhupada, they sometimes, you know, have see Srila Prabhupada coming for them and to take them back and things like that. And then I started, I was kind of thinking, if we are attached to our Guru Dev and, um, you know, and they go back to Godhead, how does that affect us? I mean, does that, um, huh, well, I guess. Okay. well, that's, I mean, depends on your power of devotion. You know, you can have, I mean, you can have Prabhupada as your spiritual master or someone, on, well, it's hard to find anyone equal to Prabhupada and say, doesn't mean you're going to go back to Godhead. You have to, one has to, come up to the standard like that but the more powerful the spiritual master is the more mercy the more easier it is for you to uh, receive mercy because all of the spiritual masters are receiving mercy through to from krishna so the more powerful a guru is the more he's receiving mercy from krishna and the more he's giving that mercy to us so there are different spiritual masters on different levels of spiritual attainment. Like that. So in any case, that's, that's incidental. What's important is that we have to do the work. <laughs> yeah. And Prabhupada used to say that, uh, you know, the birds, they fly in the flock. But still, each bird has to make its own effort. He would use the word, you have to fly your own plane. Although you may have take help from other planes or birds are taking help from other birds. Still, it's your effort that's going to make the difference. How much you can ex access mercy from others and use that mercy in your own practice of Krishna consciousness. So the mercy is there. <laughs> it's up to you how much you can take or how much you can access. I mean, you read the scriptures. It's not, it's not like the scriptures are talking to, in one way. They're talking in different ways to people who are on different levels of practice. So we may accept something less than ideal and think that that is good enough but then again then you have to understand what is what is ideal what is pure devotional service and that is that verse we spoke when it's unmotivated by anything material and un un uninterrupted that is pure devotional service Mukha Swami also gives so to the, whatever degree you have reached pure devotional so this verse we're speaking about today gives some indication that if one falls short they pick up wherever they are in their next life 
So that next life is a benefit, a benediction to continue. Death does not stop one's progress in devotional service. It just switches one to a different position, situation where one has to, one can pick up again from where they left off. But therefore, you know, do your best. <laughs> Get as far as you can in this life. <laughs> Don't think, now we have to be careful because this verse, it is, it is concessionary. We should think, well, yeah, well, I'll just go so far and then I'll get the next nice verse in my next life and then I'll pick up from there. But Prabhupada would say, whatever's keeping you here in this life, you have to face that again in your next life. That same block, that same attachment will again be something you have to overcome in order to continue to make progress. So this is not concessionary in the sense that it allows us to take it easy. The Christians used to criticize the idea of, of uh, reincarnation, saying that one life, that way if you say simply one life, then you have to try your best in this one life. If we say you have many lives, then they say, well, that's giving you too much leadway and you may not become serious enough. But no, it's actually just the nature of the soul that it does not die. And it's not, and it doesn't, it doesn't stop wherever it, that particular birth ends. It keeps going in that direction. So, uh, yeah, uh, the best thing or the most efficacious and most effective thing is, is to seek out the association of advanced devotees. And this is where you'll make your progress. Thank you so much, Maharaj, for your answer. It was beautiful and, and gives me a lot to meditate on. I'm very grateful. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Mm -hmm. Buddha Bhavana Prabhu, you have another question. <laughs> Hare Krishna Maharaj, thank you. Um, so, yeah, you mentioned just now you were talking about mercy. A little closer. You, sorry, yes. Maharaj, you were speaking about mercy and the importance of mercy. And I just wanted to understand a little bit more about this because we sometimes see that even, let's say, devotees who have not been practicing for so long, they may be able to do something that has, um, has an externally big effect, let's say, or communicates to many people. And then we also see that others may be around longer, but we can see that those people who are around longer, externally there isn't as much going on, maybe but they definitely are much more realized in their Krishna consciousness. So how do we understand the um, manifestation of mercy? Is it the external preaching effect? Because we sometimes say that Prabhupada, he was able to spread Krishna consciousness all over the world. And yet at the same time in our teaching, we know that in Vrindavan, there are very pure residents of Vrindavan, but they're just engaged in their service to Krishna there. They're not necessarily spreading Krishna consciousness all over the world. So how do we understand that mercy is manifesting? Well, sometimes we get, we discuss this point and we say, well, what is actually mercy? <laughs> I mean, it can be defined in so many ways, but we get to the essence of mercy. Mercy means the opportunity to associate with advanced devotees and to engage in devotional service. If you get that, that is the, the best form of mercy you can get. That association, but it has to culminate in service. So sometimes we say the opportunity for service is really the essence of mercy. Thank you so much. That makes complete sense. Yeah. And if we can find that service in the association of advanced devotees, then the power of that service is greater oh. could could you elaborate on that if you because you just said that if we can find this um service in the association of advanced devotees the power of that service is greater could you elaborate please maharaj yeah 
Um, let's see, what is that verse? Uh, oh, I'm trying to think. The last part of the verse is great service is done, and by such service one gets an affinity. Yeah, susu show shradana siya vasudeva kataruchi, shamaya seva pipa vipa, ponya shavana, ponya servana chaitana. Sususro shradana siya vasudeva kataruchi, shamaya seva vipa, ponya tirta. The save or not. By rendering service to great souls, great service is done. By such service, one gets an affinity to hear the message of Vasudev. When you serve great souls, it awakens your desire to hear and chant the glories of the Lord. Which Thank you, Mark. Takes you to the platform. Yeah, takes you. Takes you faster along the path of bhakti. <laughs> Wonderful. Thank you so much, Maharaj. That makes it very clear. Yeah. Thank you for that interesting question. So if there are no further questions, we can end the call. Any last minute questions for Maharaj? Thank you once again, Maharaj. Very nectarian class. We will go ahead and end the class now. One chakal patarubhyascha kripas and thibhyavicha. His Holiness Maharaj.